This is the beginning of our geometry unit. It's going to be pretty quick. Um, it's, we're going to start today with some key vocabulary. Before we begin, though, I want you to make sure you're getting your name on the cover of your packet. And my name, in case it gets lost. And your class period, please. And then we're going to skip past the first page for notes and go straight to some vocabulary that's on page three. I want you to notice how this page is set up. The first column is the vocabulary term. The second column is definition, and we're going to be filling in the blank with the vocabulary term. We have an illustration because geometry is a very visual part of math. And there's a place for notes that you're going to be putting in your own words. The first vocabulary term is adjacent angles. And I'd like you to say adjacent. Adjacent. Say it one more time and see if you can feel your tongue making the D and the J. Adjacent. Do you feel that? It's kind of an unusual term, but adjacent means things that are right next to each other. Ms. Squadez's classroom is adjacent to mine. What do we share? This wall. Let's look at the definition for adjacent angles. Two angles that are what? Next to each other that share a common side. Just like this is my common wall with Ms. Guarez, this is the common side right here for these two angles. The measures of, and we're going to write in adjacent angles, and then we can read that sentence. The measurements of adjacent angles add. So let's do a little bit of labeling with our colors. In your lighter color, I would like you to label the common side. That's this part of the angles here. And if you use your darker colors, you can show this angle, BAC, goes like this. And this angle, DAC, is here. And they both share that common side in the middle. How many angles are there in adjacent angles? Two. And what do they have? a common side. Picking up your pencil over here, use your own words to take some notes on what you now know about adjacent angles. Our next vocabulary term is vertical angles. Can everybody say vertical angles? Vertical. When two lines intersect, the opposite angles formed by those lines are called vertical angles. And we're going to write the term one more time. Vertical. Oops. Vertical angles have equal measures. What's really important about vertical angles is that they have an intersect point where they cross. And in this case, it's right where C is. These always remind me of Star Wars. Can you guys see the ships that they fly? Kind of look like. Sorry. I'm going to use one of my colors to show angle D, C, G is opposite of angle F, C, E. And can you tell by looking at those that they have the same angle measurement? Okay. That's not the only opposites, though. 
there's another set of opposites here. So in the two colors, I can show my two sets of opposite angles. These two have the same measurement as each other, and these two have the same measurement as each other. But are they the same all around? No, that's why it's two sets. Again, in your own words, a couple of, get some notes down about what you know now about vertical angles. Our next vocabulary is perpendicular. Everybody say perpendicular. perpendicular. Two lines are perpendicular. And I made this space too small. My writing always is too big. Two lines are perpendicular if they intersect in one point and any of the angles formed by the intersection of the lines is 90 degrees. Think of this as a plus sign. A plus sign is perpendicular. We see the mark there for a 90 degree angle. Do you guys see it down there, the little teeny one? All of these angles are 90 degrees. That's what makes this perpendicular. And they intersect right there in the middle. So it also has an intersect. We have a saying in math that all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Because a rectangle is a shape with 90 degree angles and four sides, right? But a square is a special rectangle because all of its sides are the same. Well, perpendicular is also vertical. This is just a special vertical, just like a square is a special rectangle. This has an intersection like this. It has opposite angles. This one is opposite this one. This one is opposite this one. It's just special in the fact that all four of them are 90 degrees this time. Usually, with vertical angles, you've got two different angle measurements. In this one, they're all the same. So it's a special vertical angle. One more time here, in your own words, tell me what you now know about perpendicular. Our last two vocabulary terms kind of go together. We have complementary angles and we have supplementary angles. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So let's fill that in. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. And I'll be honest, as your math teacher, I used to confuse these two all the time. I knew one of them was 90 and the other was 180, but I could never remember which one was which. Let's just put a little color in here. Complementary, we've got 30 and 60. What does it equal? 90 degrees. And you see that here. Here's a lovely 90 degree angle with the two of them together. But it's supplementary that finally helped me remember which one is which. Do you guys want to know my trick? Let's look at what a supplementary angle does. If I have 120 and I have 60, 
I can add those two together, and what do they equal? 180. This is my 180 degree angle here. What kind of line does it make? It's a straight line. It's that word straight that helps me remember. S equals straight. This is how my brain works. I'm giving you my little tip. S also equals supplementary. Okay, and if S equals straight, then we get our straight line. Supplementary, it adds up to what number? So S is the starting letter for the angle that equals 180 degrees. And now in your own words, I want you to tell me something about complementary to help you remember the difference between complementary and supplementary.